Hi guys, it's Kamil here and I'm coming to you with a book review, The Last Flight of the Flamingo by Mia Kuto. Mia Kuto is a white Mozambican writer that writes in Portuguese. He's a winner of Neustadt Literary Prize, which is called an American Nobel Prize, and he is one of the contenders to Nobel Prize in Literature. The Last Flight of the Flamingo was published in 2000 in Lisbon. The book is set in post-Civil War Mozambique and is focused around the investigation led by United Nations representative on the explosions of UN soldiers stationing in Mozambique, peacekeepers. Of course, for years, Mozambique people were killed by mines and nobody was really occupied with that fact, but when UN soldiers are starting to disappear, being dismembered by the explosions, UN representatives get involved. The opening page, the opening chapter starts from the very picturesque scene. There is only one member of the body left after the soldier explodes. And this member is a member, the pennies lying on the street, there are people gathering around. The first thing that you notice reading Mia Kuto's The Last Flight of the Flamingo is what's coined by literature specialist animist realism, which is a subgenre of magical realism. The book is full of local traditions, local beliefs being part of the narration. And the other thing that is extremely joyful and extremely entertaining to read is the play on words. Mia Kuto tells a story of a country that was never given a chance to grow up, grow up into themselves, as it was kidnapped by the colonialism. And even though Mia Kuto is not a black African, he's a white African, he has no hesitation in calling colonialism occupation. He pictures a country that was lost in translation, the country that was occupied by Portuguese, then was kidnapped by other Western ideologies like Marxism, now capitalism. It's a country that white men, even though they left the power in the hands of local apparatchiks, local people that are more occupied in doing goods for themselves rather than to help the people of the country, they are still there, present with those ideologies and the way the country was left in the hands of those people that follow the Western narration, not the local tradition. Miyakuta contrasts those two beliefs. One is represented by Italian, Risi Massimo, the guy that is United Nations representative, and the other more so by the father of the main character, the narrator of the novel. The father that is taking off his pyjama only when he wants to go to sleep. The father that goes outside at night, takes out his skeleton and hangs it on the trees to save it from it being eaten by hyenas. This book is so smart in the way it's constructed and so brilliant in its humor, the local apparatchik, the local leader of the government, local bureaucrat, has a wife that stolen fridges, um, washing machines from local hospital. And it's shown in such a humorous manner that in the same time you laugh and on the other hand you are thinking how crazy this world is. The other aspect of this multi-layer, although very short novel, almost a novella, is the concept of truth that Mia Kuto is trying to address. What is truth? There is a sentence here in this book in a matter of the truth escapes to many questions. It's a very interesting concept that realism is not the only truth. There is other element to reality that should be as strongly considered. What's also interesting, this book is constructed with various narrative tools. There are letters being written as part of the chapters. There are the stories being told by 
the characters that are very colorful, very unusual, but very well structured. And it's a joy to read. And in the same time, it gives you a lot to think about as per the colonialism, but also as per the responsibility of local people that those countries were left in hands of to grow themselves and with themselves the country that is their homeland. Tell me if you read any of Mia Kuto's work. Tell me what uh, have you thought about them, if you read them. And I talk to you soon.